Today is episode 37, Andrew Messia and Joel Duncan, and we're going to be talking about, we're going to be talking about hats. safety. Okay, well, yeah, no, no, not hats. Okay. We're going to be talking about our top tips for safety in Medellin, our top tips for uh, working or doing business, uh, mostly working in Medellin, and our top tips for dating in Medellin. Obviously, this is our opinions. Uh, we all, we... We've been here for 10 years, so we have some insight, but everyone's experience is different. So it's don't take the, you got to take what we say with a grain of salt. And also, if you want to criticize and hate on us, you could do that as well, because we love you. That's what we're here for. So what you said, you said it's going to be about safety, about working and about dating mainly. We're going to well, this yeah. one's going to be shorter than usual, but we're going to try to, um, you know, get all the PowerPoints, cut yeah. all the, the fluff. Exactly. So um, I, to I told uh, Joel to uh, get together his top tips for dating and for safety and for uh, working in Medellin. So and I have my own. We have not seen each other's uh, points. So basically, I'm going to ask Joel, for example, what is his top uh, safety, uh, his first top safety suggestion for anybody that's visiting or wanting to come to Medellin, what would be his uh, top suggestion? And then I will go, I will see if I have it on my list uh, or if I agree with it or disagree with it or whatever. And then I will go to mine and then he'll check his list. So we'll go back and forth a, a few times. Um, we'll go from safety, working, and then dating last. So. Okay. And if anybody has a suggestion, if you have a tip that we did not um, give, drop it in the comment. Um, Felipe is at his at home as he should be uh, moderating the comments and uh, he'll probably uh, send them through to us or Andrew will check his phone. Right. So we're starting with the top 10 tips yeah, for, for safety in Medellin. Yes. For those of you guys uh, joining us on Facebook, thank you for watching. And we're also on YouTube live. Um, we're talking about safety. So the first the first suggestions for safety. So, Joel, uh, tell me one of your top safety suggestions? Like if someone were to be coming to Medellin to visit um, and didn't know anything about Medellin, uh, we get this question a lot. Like, what do you suggest? Is is Medellin safe? What should I look out for? What would be your first tip? So I'm going to throw it back at you for a second so you can explain to those who have not tuned into an episode before, who've missed some episodes, what is the number one thing that people say here that we used to see on little uh, stickers and spray painted on walls, especially for foreigners. What do they say here? Uh, say no to sex tourism. So uh, yeah, the, there, the there was, one. I would always see the stickers that say, say, say no to sex tourism yep. or whatever. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't remember. Pa something about a papaya, something oh, about a fruit. Yeah. No, no that papaya, no that papaya, the, you, there is a, <laughs> You could see stickers, even still, you could see stickers and um, and and you'll see graffiti on the wall that says this uh, phrase in Spanish. It's a very common Colombian phrase that says, uh, no dar papaya, don't give papaya. So what does that idiom mean? It basically means don't show your shit. Um or it'll get taken. Don't don't flaunt, don't floss, don't don't stunt on people. Um, or if you present it, people will take it. And, you know, uh, before we get into that, a lot of people will say, and we had the discussion before, you get robbed and then it's sort of you blame the victim. So the thing here is this thing, it's sort of like it can be taken two ways. It's like, if you show it, people will take it. Well, you're in a country where it's not like, it's not a G7 nation. There's a lot of poor people. Right. We live in Poblado in the nice, fluffy Beverly Hills of the city. But there's a lot, a lot of poor people. I think we threw out some stats with Adrian the, the last time. It was like, what is it like 50 percent or 30 or 50 percent? I don't want to misquote are under the poverty line. Right. Uh, so if you showing stuff, expect to get that taken um, or at least know that it could be taken. You don't have to be scared to walk around with a watch and what's not. But the, the big saying here that every if you get robbed here, the first thing that I would say 99% of paisas, Colombians will ask you is were like, were you giving papaya? Were you showing off? And if you were showing off, then, eh, you know, whatever. Anyways, so my number yeah. one tip, I'm going to get into it. I would think one of the main things, because I've only been robbed once in nine years, and it was sort of my fault. We talk about the story after, but I would say number one tip, put your wallet and your phone in your front pocket always. 
Do not put your wallet or your phone in your back pocket because not every robbery here is a violent robbery. There's pickpocketers, spe specifically at night, and I'm speaking from experience because my phone got taken and it was by a group of four people. And I made one of the, the silliest mistakes just because I was wearing tight, stylish pants, you know, I like <laughs> to do. And so the pants were, it was a little uncomfortable in the front. So I put my phone in my back pocket and I was holding an umbrella, walking down the road and a group of four people came up and we'll get more into the story later if we if we have time. And basically took my my wallet, passed it around each of my sorry my phone, passed it around and took off. So I would say if you're here, it's not like back home where you can just throw your 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 phone in your back pocket and stuff and walk around. Keep it in the front front pocket. Okay. That, yeah, that wasn't even on my list uh, yeah. of putting ching, 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 things ching. on on the uh, in your in your front pocket. Um, no, that papaya was definitely on my list. Okay. Don't, don't give papaya, meaning that uh, for those of you just joining us, we're talking about safety and our top tips. Joel just had one that I didn't think of, which is make sure to put your, your, your stuff, uh, like your valuables or your cell phone and your wallet mainly in your front pocket, especially if you're like in crowds or if it's nighttime and you're walking down La Diez, um, you know, or, or up La Diez or through a, a back alley going to Parque Lleras or, or Provenza. Um, you, you definitely don't want to get pickpocketed. It's happened to Joel. Um, the same people actually attempted to do it to me and distract me. And they usually try to get people that are drunk. And like, where was that? Where exactly was that? Cause they did the same thing with me. Yeah. On the corner of, of, of La Diez with, uh, Avenida Poblado, but on that side. Yeah. Uh, yeah. On. So basically at the big intersection of, at, at Avenida, at uh, Parque Poblado, where there's a four way, you know, stop, stop, uh, stop light. So you got, you have to stop there and it takes a pretty, a, a while to move. So it gives people enough time to sort of surround you. And so no matter which side you're on, they all come and convene there. So if you're here and it hasn't happened to you, be very careful at that corner after hours. It's safe because you feel it's bright and there's like, um, security cameras, but watch out there. A group works that corner. Not right now, because they're probably at home. Yeah, they're probably at, at home doing something else. Yeah. But, but yeah. So okay. So What's put, yours? Putting your 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 uh, stuff in your front pocket. I always do it. I see you trying to read my answers. Uh, no, I'm not. I'm not, not. Don't be reading. Okay, so my one my top one of my top. It's not my top top, but it's one of my top. Um, Bottom top is uh, when you're out to make sure to watch your drink. Oh, you to see. watch your drink. Damn it. And um, and I say this because it's very common to, uh, well, it, it's more common here in Colombia than it is in the United States to get uh, roofied or I guess um, uh, the dragon's breath, uh, which is called scopolamina, scopolamina or, or in English it's scopolamine or uh, burundanga also in Spanish. Um, they pour, it's a powder that they from a plant that they pour, uh, pour into your drink and it basically I mean, it basically makes you or turns you into like a zombie. Yeah. Um, and they do what they call el paseo millonario, which means that um, since you're kind of like on zo zombie mode, they make you go to the ATM and pull out cash. And you're doing this, even though you seem lucid and conscious, um, you're doing this under their guidance and you're taking out money. It's happened to many people that we know. Um, sometimes it, it goes really wrong where they overdose the person and it could literally kill the person. Yeah. Um, or the person just ends up, you know, naked somewhere. In Parque Poblado. In Parque like, Poblado. Uh, the guy that used to own the Indian restaurant. Yeah, we had a friend, an Indian friend that owned an Indian restaurant here a long time ago. Um, and that's what happened to him. Uh, and one can say that he was giving papaya um, when he got uh, scopolamined. But um, but either way, it happened. So make sure that when you're at the bar that, you know, what we usually do is like if we're at like a crowded bar and we sit our drink down, we usually put like a napkin on top yep. Yep. or like the uh, or the coaster or a business card. Thing. If you have it. Yeah. If you carry business cards, put the business card on top and don't get don't you know, don't receive drinks if it's at like a, at a club. Um, and people are offering you drinks and everyone's drinking from the same thing. It's usually pretty safe, especially if it's a club like in, 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 uh, Parque Lleras or above Parque Lleras. But if, if a very hot girl comes up to you and starts offering you a drink, something that would probably never happen to you in your life. Oh, you're just trying to steal my number five on my list. All right, go ahead. Go ahead. Make sure to watch your drink. Yeah. Yeah. I said my, my, my number two was don't leave your glass or drink unattended in bars 
or clubs. And actually, the reason I used to hear this, we used to think it's like a, an urban legend. People like, you know, I used to hear people that I knew, that I know, um, talk about people that they know that it happened to. And then eventually it became like just them saying that it happened to them. But I was in a bar, La Octava, um, years ago, and the same thing sort of happened. This girl came up to the bar as I was ordering a drink and she seemed like really friendly. And it almost seemed like I, when I turned to turned to look at her, I almost looked like she was working with the bartender because I saw his hand. She kept trying to distract me. Yeah. And every time I tried to look at the drink, she would like put her hand on me and, um, you know, like talk really flirty. And I looked to my left and I swear I saw another person put something in my glass. Really? Yeah. And it freaked me out so much because I'm like, I did not. Th that's not in my mind. The person was beside me on the other side working with her. Um, and it seemed like I was being set up. And I literally just was like, I don't want to take a risk. And I left that drink and I walked out of the bar. And since then, that's why I started to put the, uh, the business card on there. All right. So don't leave your glass of drink unattended. Number two. You go first. You're number two. Let's see if you. Okay. You uh, let's see. So mine is. Okay. So one of the biggest things, if you're coming to visit uh, Medellin and, um, and, and whether you're a guy or a girl, you want to rent an apartment. If you're renting, if you're not at a hostel, if you're renting an apartment, um, you want to make sure that the apartment has a portero which is a, a security guy at, at the bottom. And more important, even more importantly, you've got to make friends with that fucking guy because it, uh, let's say that for some reason you were very cautious and you were drugged. But if that portero knows you yeah. and you've talked to him and you've told him, hey, uh, John, w um, you know, I'm going out tonight and if I come back, let the other portero, the night shift guy know that I'm not bringing anyone back. I usually don't bring people back. Or if I do bring people back, make sure that you get their ID and et cetera, et cetera. Um, because what happens is that uh, I just literally read a story today in one of the Facebook groups that someone uh, had someone over, that they, they were drugged, and then they their, their cell phone, laptop, cameras, uh, wallet, money were stolen from their apartment and uh, the portero didn't do anything, I, I believe, because there was no portero at that building. And in other cases, also, the porteros didn't do anything because they, they don't know the person very well. So they just saw him come in. He's a, he's a normal person going into his apartment with a date. So they didn't do anything. But if you make friends with the portero and you let him know what your personality is like, that you don't just bring anyone over, et cetera, um, then, then they would sound an alarm or, or a red flag would be thrown up if you see like a, a sketchy girl or even just a regular girl, but you're acting sketchy or out of, out of uh, the normal. Yeah. And, and, you know, actually one of the good things about that, it's funny that you mentioned that, that in terms of safety, you hear a lot of people more so I think in Bogota than here in Medellin, but people will always say, don't take a, oops, I might give one away. Okay. I was about to give one away. This is two in one. So I'm going to hit my number two is, is if you live here, You've pro you're probably a little more experienced. You probably can spot a little more uh, shady people. But a lot of people will say, don't take a taxi on the road, especially in the night. Like um, don't hail it. Don't hail a taxi. Hail a random don't hail a taxi. taxi. <laughs> Call it and let it show up and look at the light. And there's some app and different apps uh, that you can look. I mean, for those of you, a lot of people take Uber. Um, but for those who still take the taxis, uh, the, the apps will at least show the name of the person and just like Uber and the license plate that's coming for you, or it's at least going to be traced to a taxi company. Um, the reason being, it's the same thing. Like, what did you call it? El Paseo Millonario? El, pa El Paseo Millonario. Like the, the cab driver could not really be a cab driver. They could just be using somebody else's cab and um, basically take you and rob you and do whatever else. Uh, it's never happened to me. I I've, don't know anybody personally, but I've read a lot about it. So one of the biggest things is call the cab uh, before you leave, let it show up to your place or the bar or wherever you're at. And what Andrew mentioned was really key for a lot of people coming here. They don't speak a lot of Spanish in their minds. They do. They knew a few words and they think they're fluent. But if you want one of the biggest things you do here to that with that portero or that doorman is 
up when you're upstairs in your in your apartment, you just call down and say, hey, I need a taxi. He calls the taxi and then he calls you to let you know when the taxi is here and you go down. So it becomes his sort of job to double check for your security when you're getting into a cab. And so that's that's one of the tips for. Yeah, just right. So, OK, on. so. How many have you said already? Two and two. Mine two. was don't hail the cab. D don't hail the cab. And also, what was the first one? My first one was uh, keep your stuff in your front pockets, okay. not your back. All right. So keep your stuff in their front pocket. Uh, don't hail a random taxi out on the street. My first one was watch your drink uh, when you're at the bar or out or whatever. Uh, or d just don't take drinks from strangers either. Um, and also the renting an apartment to make sure that there's a portero and making friends with that portero. So my third suggestion for safety, for those of you that want to visit post coronavirus, because things are opening up. I mean, we look out on the street and there's literally chiclet vendors out on the street now. Oh, uh, places are open. People the, playing flutes. Pl people playing the flute coming by with the flute. They, they, they serenade us. Yeah. Um, my fourth uh, we're only going to do five each. So yeah. my fourth suggestion is, um, all right, shit, sorry. I opened something different here. Um, yeah. So my fourth su uh, suggestion is don't resist a robbery for your safety. Like, let's say that you are getting pocketed. Let's say that you are getting held up at gunpoint. Let's say that you are um, even just being threatened without a, a visual a gun. Uh, I think this kind of goes for anybody traveling anywhere, really. It's like, why resist the robbery? Um, and funny that you're saying that because both of us resisted our robberies and we're stupid. Yeah, but I mean, that's different because we're stupid. Yes. Um, but Don't be like, stupid like but, us. Don't but, resist. But if I, if there were a knife, yeah, a if there weapon. was a knife yeah. or, uh, or a gun, I would have not resisted. Yeah. Literally, if the guy has a knife, what yeah. am I going to do? I'm like, here's my phone. I, yeah, yeah. I can go buy another one tomorrow. Um, or, or, or if there's a gun, obviously, I'll just... I get naked. I'd yeah. be like, here. Hopefully, that will scare him. Showing the PP out in public, huh? Yeah, showing my PPE yeah. out in public. PPE, your private protective, <laughs> your protective equipment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I say, give, give, give the phone up. It's not worth your life. I think that goes for just about anywhere, right? Anywhere in the world. Um, because actually, years ago, you remember uh, back at uh, the Hotel Dan Carlton. There's uh for those who are watching Chris Chris and the, the folks that have been here for a long time I believe this guy was like a special forces guy or whatever and there's a beautiful park at a hotel right near here the Dan Carlton um, Parque La Presidenta which yeah. everybody goes to there's nice markets and stuff during the day and so people tend to walk through it in the night on their romantic escapades or whatever or just deciding it's a it's a really big shortcut to get to Parque Lleras. and I actually remember this guy was like special forces and he took some of them out. But there was a whole group of them and they literally just, just beat the, shit, beat out the of shit out of him because he didn't just give his shit up and, and was like done. He's like, man, I'm special forces. And I can't remember if he had gotten killed or, or beaten to near death. But um, these things, by the way, this is not an alarmist thing. We got to tell you, uh, and I, I, it's going to come back to my number three in a sec, or maybe I'll lead right into my number three, is do not act, do not fool yourself into thinking that you're at home. This yeah. is not this is not the narcos stuff you see on Netflix, but shit gets real here. I, I, I got to explain it to all you gangsters, all you tough guys. This is Medellin, Colombia, and don't let looks deceive you. This was or t it still is a very big drug capital of the world. So what does that mean? There's some dangerous people here. They don't walk around like you see in Narcos and whatever and flashing around. You probably wouldn't know yeah. until you sit You go to a club yeah. and they could be there and you yeah. wouldn't know because they blend in and they, they blend look in. just like us. And you don't know who their family is, right? So don't think that because you might be tough and you're from Chicago or you're from LA, you know, LA or you're from whatever, you're going to come here and act all crazy because you're tough and you're buff. Your muscles can only go so far because these people are so well connected that you you, you just don't want to fuck with people just because you know how to fight right. or because you're you're a tough guy. Well, let's put it this way. I've been here. Uh, we've both been here nearly a decade, almost 10 years. In September of this year will be 10 years yep. for me in Colombia. And in those 10 years, literally for many, many of those years, I would say more than half. My Friday night was Thursday night. 
I'm, I would start partying on Thursday and end on, on Sunday. Yeah. Um, and in that time, I have never seen, I've only seen one bar fight. But Chris, Chris, Cajol, Chris Cajolis, 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 well, uh, from, from, from uh, Tejo Medellin, I remember we said that because I still seen one. It was a massive fight. Um, and he said that, what are you guys talking about? There's fights all the time. I've never seen I've, I never I've see never him. Seen. I mean, uh, uh, unless if he's going to like some ghetto ass bars. Where Chris doesn't even, he's not even allowed out the house. He doesn't even drink. Doing. Yeah. Chris doesn't drink. Chris, you don't drink. Anyway. I mean, either way, I've literally seen one bar fight and, and the reason people don't, uh, and I believe the reason people don't fight at bars like they do in the U S because in the U S you do a little fist fight. Yeah. And maybe like two guys get involved, but then the cops show up, yeah, everybody gets broken up, yeah. the, the place gets fined, there's bouncers everywhere. Here, they'll kill you and then nobody will get caught. Or if they do, the maximum penalty for uh, murder, uh, there is no life sentence for murder. It's 45 years max with good time since of, and overcrowding. You do less than 50%, you do about 30% of the time, including the uh, Garabito, which is the world's most, uh, look him up, it's very interesting on YouTube, Garabito, who has raped and killed, uh, self-proclaimed 300 children, raped and killed 300 children in the early, uh, 90s, late 90s, uh, until 2000s, he was finally caught, raped and killed, and took police and detectives to the uh, graves where he got them, and they were uncovered and everything, and he says that they're, he, he, he led them to 100 of them. So he was sentenced for that, and he was going to be released just a few years ago because he had met his maximum years. But now, uh, due to a technicality, he's still in jail. But imagine if a person like that that has raped and killed over 100 children can be released from jail because this country doesn't has a fucked up justice system that doesn't have the death penalty and doesn't have life sentencing. Then imagine some random dude fucking killing you over your cell phone or killing you because you think you're a tough guy. Breaking in the your fucking, leg. Yeah. Because yeah. in, 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 you go to the gym once or twice a week or you have a couple tattoos. Yeah. You're, yeah, they'll just pull out a gun. Uh, all of their friends carry knives. I've seen it. They put them in their shoes while they're getting patted down. Uh, they go into the clubs. When they go in there, they're they're ready to stab people. They don't care about security cameras or whatnot. But it's not just that. I think I think another reason is once again, people think of it's all economics. It's all money, right? If and you know, I, I've lived in in different countries and I've lived in some 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 pretty bad rough areas. I grew up in a I'd say close to very 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 rough areas where um, if you want somebody to get their legs broken it's cheap yeah. it's like it's like buying it's like buying a what like like a hundred dollars like there's places a hundred dollars two hundred dollars like somebody will come and literally break your goddamn legs for that money because two hundred dollars is a lot of money it's like more it's like the, the minimum wage or just about at this particular point so my point to that is there's folks up in the hills and wherever that if you don't if if, if <laughs> you got to know who you're messing with because life and getting hurt is pretty cheap uh, here. So just watch out for that. Um, again, we're speaking from experiences that we've heard from other people. And we know, like literally, I had someone, uh, I think in the second year I was here, um, they were they were they were like getting a little too going a little too far with some stuff. They were getting a little extreme. And I had a friend that um, that we do. We're not going to call names that owned um a club in Barrio Colombia. And he's like, listen, man, we can take care of that for X amount. I'm like, for what? $70. And so you just got to be careful. Just yeah. be really, really careful. Anyways. Yeah. So, uh, mine? okay. So we're, uh, that was my third one. Don't, um, uh, uh, don't resist robbery. That was my third, uh, safety tip for those of you that are just joining us on Facebook live and YouTube live. Uh, we're talking about our top right now. We're talking about our top safety tips. I just gave my third one, which is basically don't resist robbery. Joel, you're on your My, third. Yeah, mine's a little simpler. Um, it's basically don't use your cell phone in a cab. And if you are going to use your cell phone in a cab, roll up the windows. Why? Uh, in Toronto, this doesn't happen, period. I've never heard of it. But here, one of the most common ways, especially during December, which is crazy, and there's another time, which is the highest, 
is motorcycle robberies. So, so you people know. If you're in a car with an expensive phone, like an iPhone, it's something that easy to fence to get, get to, to sell back and make money, especially if you have a fancy phone. And there's people watching, so they'll pull up beside you on a motorbike, they'll look in, they'll watch you, they'll be like, hmm, cool. And then there's specific areas in the city that are really uh, targeted, yeah, congested. So they know that you're like, you know, 10 cars behind in, at the stop sign, and one car pulls up on one side, and people, be careful about this. And once again, don't resist because usually they never are alone. What happens is one comes on this side or this side if you're on the passenger seat and they pull up, either they show the gun or they have it disguised and they're like, give me your fucking phone, basically. Um, and so you have a, the point that you can try to you know, fight them off or give them, but usually what happens is another bike comes on the other side. And so there's two guns pointing at you. Um, so the, the point of that is, and, and a paisa will say, a lo local person will say, were you giving papaya? Once again, did you have your phone out? When you're in a cab, especially in certain areas, cab drivers right away will tell you, please, please, especially when you're going to like Central or something, they'll be like, or, or they know, they know the spots. They'll say, please put that away. So do not expose your phone, wallet. Don't be like giggling and talking like you're just uh, carefree. It, there's a very big chance that you could be at a specific point in time where there's these motorbike gangs that are they're ready to run. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, again, I've been here about 10 years now and that's never happened to me. And I live downtown, but every time I'd go through downtown, literally, I wouldn't even put my phone in my pocket. I would put it under me or I will. Like if I go, if, if we're going through downtown, I'll have my phone and I'll put it under my leg. Yep. Same with my uh, wallet. Uh, I put it under my leg instead of in my pants because then if someone were to come to rob me, I'd be, I just take out whatever cash I have and I'd be like, I don't have anything else. And here, here it is. Um, unless if they told me to get out of the car, they probably would just get my cash and that's it. Yeah. Yeah. I used to live, uh, in, in, um, in downtown, uh, near, um, El Palo. El Palo is like a big street there. Um, and above El Palo, which is Girardot, uh, is where there's a, a bunch of like trade schools and universities, but the, the, it gets really congested there. So like uh, there'll be like a, a, a lot of traffic and it's slow moving traffic. So you're basically boxed in. And I would see this and I've and there's videos on YouTube as well of of guys coming up literally on foot, not even in, in a, not even on a, on motorcycles, literally on foot coming up and literally just opening the door. So that's one of the things to make sure not to use the phone while you're there so that people don't know that you don't have anything, but also to make sure to lock the doors when you get in the cab uh, because sometimes cab drivers don't even care. They so I got a question about that for you though, because we're still on the cab topic. We talked about calling the cab before uh, from your house. We talked about rolling the windows up or not using uh, your phone in a cab, you're talking about people walking up and opening the door. So cabs are a big deal for petty crime right. or semi-petty crime here. Um, what do you say to people about where should you sit, front seat or back seat? I always sit in the front. I always sit in the front. Why is that? Why do you sit in the front? I got something to say um, about that. I always sit in the front. Well, when I used to hail taxis, now with Uber, you have to sit in the front. Yeah. Since uh, Uber gets hate on so much, they don't want taxi drivers to know that they are Ubers. Yeah. So when you get here um, and you order an Uber, they'll they'll make you sit in the front. Yep. But I like sitting in the front, one, because I'm tall, so there's more leg room. Mm -hmm. But second, um, because I can see what the driver's doing. I'm always, I, I'm less paranoid now, but in the beginning, when I first got here a while ago, um, I would be paranoid to see when the, when the, when the cab driver's like playing on his phone or doing something on yeah, his yeah. phone. So I'm right there and literally like, if I wanted to, I could just rear back and just punch the shit out of him. But wait, but why do you, what do you think he's on his phone? What do you think he's doing? Um, I always thought like, okay, maybe he's on his phone, like calling someone saying, Hey, this guy's not from here. Uh, and he's got a nice I'm, phone. I'm going to, I'm going to go to this block or this neighborhood and, uh, you guys be waiting. Okay. Because it has happened. Yeah. So, so the reason I asked about that is when I went to Bogota and it, it sort of trips me out now because I spent like a good five seconds in my head trying to decide front seat, back seat, front seat, back seat, because I've heard in Bogota, they say sit in the back. Reason being that if you sit in the front, these guys already have people trailing you. And again, not to freak people out, but I've heard this, that if you sit in the front, if there's the, the cab driver is working with somebody, 
they can come in in the back seat and they put the gun, the knife or whatever to you. And they're like, okay, it's just s s chill the fuck out. Yeah. This is what, this is how this is going on. And I know that actually I've, I've known people that that's happened to in, in Nicaragua and other places in Central America. Um, and I, they've been robbed clean people, firsthand stories. I don't know if it's happened here, uh, but in Bogota in particular, they say sit in the back so that you can at least have, have a peripheral, have a peripheral yeah. vision. Yeah. Okay. All yeah. right. So, okay. So we're going on to our fifth ones. Fourth, fifth, I don't know, something there. Okay. So mine is, you know, safety is is a relative term for everyone. What is safe? What does being safe mean? Um, for me, safety, being Canadian, is wearing a goddamn seatbelt. Like, that's safety for me. I want to get oh buckled my God. up. We go like two miles per hour out here. <laughs> Wait, no, 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 no. You will, if anybody's lived there, you've been in a cab where that guy has a point to prove. Like we talked about it. Like some yeah. cab drivers here feel like yeah, you know, that's this true. Is, we want to show that we're like fast and yeah, furious. Yeah, there, there will be times when you get on a cab and you speak English. Yeah. And they're like- They ramp it up. They ramp it up. They're yeah. like, oh, I got to show these guys. Like, yeah. I don't know what's going through yeah, their yeah, fucking yeah. mind, but- yeah, there'll be times that, that 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 we're going like light speed. <laughs> so so that comes back to the cab. Everything that I have to talk about has to do with the cab. But front seat or back seat? Front seat, guess why? Because you will get into a cab here and they will bury the seat belt buckles in between the seat at the back. So you'll get in the back in a lot of cabs. Now it's loosening up a bit. And you look around and there's no seat belt in the back seat. So if you want to be buckled up and you want to feel safe, get in the front seat because you get in the back seat, you're not going to tell them, hey, hey, stop, I want to buckle up. Yeah. So get in the front well, seat. Well, legally here, uh, passengers in the back seat are not legally uh, uh, obligated to wear a seatbelt. Yeah. So that's why cab drivers don't even fuck with them. They're like, they, they, cab, cab, some most cabs don't even have them. But if you get an Uber, they will usually, uh, I would say 90% of the time have yeah, uh, seatbelt in the back. Um, I, I don't think I've ever been in a Uber that didn't have a seatbelt in the back seat. But taxis do because they're usually older cars and they don't really care about the back passengers. Yeah. But but I agree. I would I every time I get the, and that's the other reason why I get in the front seat because the front seat always has a seatbelt and I always put it on. Um, but most a lot of cab drivers you'll see though, and I'm not talking about Uber but cab drivers. They'll just take the because it, you're legally required to wear a, a seatbelt. They literally have this loose, this like limp seat belt and they take it and they throw it over their belly because there's usually like a little belly thing going on and they throw it like this and just have it there. It's not actually buckled in. It's just for show. Okay. I've seen that. I've seen that a lot. I don't know. Okay. Yeah, I have. Yeah. So what's your number five? All right. So my top, my top safety. You saving the best tip. for last? Yeah, this is my last one. This is my last one. And then we're going to move on to working yeah. and business in Medellin. Yeah. So my top safety tip in Medellin is don't come to Medellin. I thought you were gonna say wear a condom. Well, yeah, okay, so you should wear a condom. But when you come to put it on, on the plane. If you really wanna be safe, yeah. and if you're scared, yeah. don't come. Yeah. It's simple as that. Yeah. Um, Medellin, for the most part, is safe. All of these anecdotes that we've given are over the course of 10 years. Um, Although there ha we have known people that were here literally just six months. Uh, just last year, uh, a guy was here for two months, got shot because he wouldn't give up his uh, his necklace. Yeah. Right here in Parque Poblado, he got shot in the head for his necklace. Um, uh, so obviously this is over the course of 10 years. Nothing's ever happened to us yeah. you know, at all. But if you have a inkling of doubt or, or terror or, or, or you're scared or you buying to the fear mongering that some people do, yeah. just don't come, save yourself the trip, save yourself yeah. the- uh, Money. Yeah, yeah, the money. You don't need to come to Medellin. Um, we have enough gringos here. Go on any of the groups and you'll see how much hate there is there. We don't need more of that. A lot of gringos. Yeah, so a, lot, a, lot of, a lot of people from a lot of different countries, but namely, I would say the people that hate the most are the people from the US. I don't know why, because I've been to other countries and been in other expat groups and gringo groups of other countries, and they're nothing like this. I think it's something about Medellin. I bet the most pleasant one is the Canadian one. I don't even, I haven't even checked that. I'm sorry, Canadians. I'm gonna go find Canadians. Well, you haven't checked it because nothing comes out of there. What are they talking it's about? It's just like, all peace and love. Or is and someone stuff. coming? From from Canada to bring me some maple syrup. <laughs> Yo, so, I can't wait. I'm gonna Canadians. I'm reaching out to us 
and 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 and, and our positivity. We get. I'm getting in there. Yeah, Canadians are the best, man. Yeah, I, I got the fucking yeah. best. Just put some ice skates on them, and then they turn into fucking beasts. All right. <laughs> so, what is uh, your your top? So now my number five is gonna piss some people off. Um, and by people I mean Colombians, foreigners. For your own safety, be very, very careful with these little flying saucers like this. They call arepas. <laughs> but it's not your regular arepa like the big ones you get. It's these little fucking cardboard circles that they put in lunch. They could kill you on like that. They, like, I don't know how they're consumable. I think it's one of the biggest safety hazards to eat those little arepas. They're made of cardboard. And maybe a little bit of flour on top of it. The most horrible thing. I'm not talking about all arepas, Colombians. But those little lunchtime ones. Yeah. Watch out. You could kill dogs. Like you could skip oh, yeah. rocks. With you could play hockey. You're from, yeah. you're yeah. from Canada. Yeah. You could play hockey. They're, they're like little hockey pucks. They're super hard. Yeah. Sometimes. Uh, and by the way, uh, this is like uh, something that you see at uh, like lunch spots. Like the... The menu of the day lunch spots menu here, dia, yeah. which are always really good, yeah. but for some reason they add this little disc They're of white. arepa. And I'm Colombian, but my mom's Santanderiana, so I'm used to like the Santanderiana style uh, arepas, which are big, juicy, yeah. cheesy, soft, salty, soft. soft, warm arepas. Uh, I'm not used to the paisa arepa, which is that little tiny one. What is that though? I don't even understand what well, that is. Uh, well, I figured it out. Well, I didn't figure it out. I figured out that I actually like it. When I, uh, what do you call it? Break it up. This break it up yeah, huh? into my beans. Like you have to. Break so this it is a into, food that you have to crush to shit yeah, it's in order a food to eat. That you need another food in order to be palatable. I mean, it is palatable. It's just like it serves no purpose, but to its benefit, it is super healthy because it's not. It, it's it's corn and and water based. And, and and you can keep them in your purse or your pocket in case you're in a cab or walking down La Diez by Parque Poblado and you just want to throw just it at somebody like throw an arepa. launch it. <laughs> yep. I don't know, Colombians talk to me if you like that little round yeah, flying who saucer. Who likes arepas? Well, gringos, who likes fucking arepas? But the, I'm talking about the little tiny ones that are super hard. Who yeah, likes that? Nobody. Wait. How is that a safety tip? It's a safety tip. Don't eat it. But why? <laughs> don't eat it. They always fall. Like, listen, for your own safety, for your own health, that shit could break your teeth. It, it could, I don't know. It could do a lot of things. It's, it's, it's my uh, safety tip. That's my number. All right. All right. All right. All right.